Hello, welcome to the McGuffey's Online Tutor. Today's lesson comes from the third eclectic reader. Lesson 10. The Young Teacher. Today, to assist me we have a guest. Mr. Jefferson, you are welcome. Thank you and thank you for having me. Before we continue, let's go over the words, which we will have in our lesson. Oh, and before we say the words, please get a pen and paper, and write the words which I'm about to mention. The words for today are Sign An act or gesture used to convey an idea, a desire, information, or a command. Marks A visible trace or impression, such as a line or spot. Parcels Something wrapped up or packaged. Venture. To proceed despite possible danger or risk. Inquire. To seek information by asking a question. Chalk. A piece of chalk or chalk like substance in crayon form, used for marking on a blackboard or other surface. Ruling. Exercising control or authority. Drawing. The art of representing objects or forms on a surface chiefly by means of lines. Pictures. Confused. Being unable to think with clarity or act with understanding and intelligence. Well, I hope you got all the words. Before we continue to the story, I would like to say that those words will be in our lesson, so please keep your ears open to them. Let's begin. Charles Rose lived in the country with his father, who taught him to read and to write. Mr. Rose told his son that, when his morning lessons were over, he might amuse himself for one hour as he pleased. There was a river nearby. On its bank stood the hut of a poor fisherman, who lived by selling fish. His careful wife kept her wheel going early and late. They both worked very hard to keep themselves above want. But they were greatly troubled lest their only son should never learn to read and to write. They could not teach him themselves, and they were too poor to send him to school. Charles called at the hut of this fisherman one day, to inquire about his dog, which was missing. He found the little boy, whose name was Joe, sitting by the table, on which he was making marks with a piece of chalk. Charles asked him whether he was drawing pictures. No. I am trying to write, said little Joe, but I know only two words. Those I saw upon a sign, and I am trying to write them. If I could only learn to read and write, said he, I should be the happiest boy in the world. Then I will make you happy, said Charles. I am only a little boy, but I can teach you that. My father gives me an hour every day for myself. Now, if you will try to learn, you shall soon know how to read and to write. Both Joe and his mother were ready to fall on their knees to thank Charles. They told him it was what they wished above all things. So, on the next day when the hour came, Charles put his book in his pocket and went to teach Joe. Joe learned very fast, and Charles soon began to teach him how to write. Some time after, a gentleman called on Mr. Rose and asked him if he knew where Charles was. Mr. Rose said that he was taking a walk, he supposed. I am afraid, said the gentleman, that he does not always amuse himself thus. I often see him go to the house of the fishermen. I fear he goes out in their boat. Mr. Rose was much troubled. He had told Charles that he must never venture on the river, and he thought he could trust him. The moment the gentleman left, Mr. Rose went in search of his son. He went to the river and walked up and down, in hope of seeing the boat. Not seeing it, he grew uneasy. He thought Charles must have gone a long way off. Unwilling to leave, without learning, something of him, he went to the hut. He put his head in at the window, which was open. There a pleasant sight met his eyes. He put his head in at the window, which was open. There a pleasant sight met his eyes. Charles was at the table. Ruling a copy book Joe was reading to him, while his mother was spinning in the corner. Charles was a little confused. 
He feared his father might not be pleased. But he had no need to be uneasy, for his father was delighted. The next day, his father took him to town, and gave him books for himself and Joe, with writing paper, pens, and ink. Charles was the happiest boy in the world when he came home. He ran to Joe, his hands filled with parcels, and his heart beating with joy. What a pleasant story, don't you think, Mr. Jefferson? Indeed it is. This story is a perfect example of faith in action. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Matthew 22 verse 39. Our Lord makes clear that inasmuch as we visit the imprisoned, clothe the naked, and help the needy, we have done it unto him. This makes me think of a great quote from R.J. Rush Dooney. There was much preaching in the early church about charity or almsgiving. The old English meaning of charity is love to God and love to man. The manifestation of charity in the life of man was seen as the presence of grace. When Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 spoke of charity, or love, he understood the word in the active sense, as God's grace in us going out freely to others. He declared the three chief Christian graces to be faith, hope, and charity, or love, and the greatest of these is charity. Yes, charity and brotherly affection are to be religiously and steadfastly practiced. Let us also strive to love our neighbor and use our talents given to us from God to help others. Well, this is the end of our lesson. And I hope you visit us again at the McGuffey's online tutor.com for more lessons and worksheets. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson, for helping me. You are very welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye.